the fascination with Greek myths. It, it mm. may seem like a weird segue, but but uh, um, one of the things that, that I found found so fascinating, not just with Greek myths and Roman myths, but also in Greek and Roman history, which I used to read a lot, is, mm. it, is this the fact that the more things change, the more they stay the same. The fact that these incredibly different societies, when you read the personal lives of people and what concerns them, how amazingly familiar it seems. Mm. And and one of the things, I guess, one of the reasons I, I guess I like the Greek god so much more than the Judeo-Christian one is is that they're much, so much more understandable. And I mean, if you're going to invent a god, you might as well invent one that, that has the characteristics. That, well, exactly. I mean, you, the Greeks looked at the world and they saw the world was was majestic and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, stunningly perfect and in, 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 remarkable. But it was also deeply violent and cruel and mm. unjust and capricious. And therefore, whoever made it <laughs> must be those things too, a yeah. mixture of. Yeah. And it's that mixture. It's the idea of the the complexity and the ambiguity of character that the Greeks seem to be the first, at least the first to be able, because of the alphabet and so on, the first to be able to transmit it to us, to have this sense of the complexity of things. But um, uh, the Greek creation myth, as you probably know, Prometheus made yes. us. Um, and... He was a titan, uh, and as you said, they're, they're wonderful, and uh, but you, and you can play with them, and you can teach them mm. what you like, but you mustn't give them fire. That's the one thing you mustn't do. And Prometheus, in the end, couldn't help it. We were defenseless compared to other animals. We didn't have, you know, echolocation or claws or stings <laughs> or, you know, things like other animals have. We were poor, naked, forked mm. little creatures. So he went up to Olympus and stole fire from heaven and gave it to us. Now, you can say that that was one way of the Greeks saying it. Literally, how do we have fire? The the, the physical stuff, sure. the, the 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 rolling plasma that melts and smelts and mm. and and roasts and toasts. But it's also the divine fire, self consciousness. The 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 the, and Zeus was right in the sense to say man mustn't have it because if we had it, we would then eventually outgrow the gods. We wouldn't need them. We'd match them, and we'd be free of them as the Greeks were, as humans are. We 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 you know. It was well before Nietzsche that we could say, you know, yeah. the gods are dead, that their fire is out, yeah. we've, we've got it now. But what's so fascinating, and how could the Greeks have known this, you wonder, <laughs> is all those thousands of years ago, that we can be sure by the end of this century there will be sapient, sentient creatures that we as Prometheuses have made. Mm -hmm. And some people like Zeus will say, we cannot give them fire. We, we're already talking about that. Yes, we, you know, if we make these robotic uh, bio, mixtures of bio-augmentation and robotics sure. and AI and all the rest of it, if, if, if we make them, we, we can't give them that spark. We can't give them self-consciousness and the ability to, you know, Im inspect themselves and to want to live in the way that, you know, mm -hmm. self-consciousness gives you. Because if we do, they won't need us. Yes. And, and we will be overcome. And, of course, we're not the first to notice the Promethean myth being that important. Um, by the end of the 18th century, when, you know, the, the Enlightenment had really taken hold, it, it was as if we were saying, ah, yes, the Greeks understood that the champion was Prometheus, that the gods are our enemies. The gods didn't want us to be completely fulfilled, self-thinking creatures. And Prometheus set us free by giving us the fire. And, and within about three months of each other, Beethoven had written a Prometheus overture yeah. and Shelley had written Prometheus Unbound because <laughs> Prometheus gets punished, of course. Sure, of course. It's about his dialogue yeah. with Zeus. Uh, um, and more importantly, really, uh, Shelley's wife, Mary Shelley, had written Frankenstein, yeah. subtitled A Modern Prometheus, about creating a, a, a life. Uh, so we've understood that the the deep relevance, the, the chime, the resonance of Greek myth inside our own feelings, and of course, uh, someone like Douglas Adams would say uh, that, uh, this has happened all many, many times before. That, that the gods had been made by a previous <laughs> group of gods yeah. yes. who had given them fire, and that was their mistake, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, yes. and for all we know, that that that, that, that will continue. That we make a race of robots who get rid of us yes, because we, we're unnecessary now. Uh, uh, the, and they will then create another life form, which will go, we don't need you, yes. and so on. Maybe that's part of the well, wider the, refinement. Of, I, like, I like to think the only difference is that they'll have a, that they'll be in that society, there'll be a debate between evolution and intelligent design, and they'll be right about <laughs> intelligent design. Whereas, whereas, yes, <laughs> exactly. It'll be the first time that <laughs> intel intelligent design has become the fact. Yeah. Exactly. It's a wonderful thought, isn't it? Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, not wonderful thoughts, I couldn't have asked you to, I'm, I'm glad you stressed Prometheus. I was going to go into or so I learned mm. something remarkable about from you. But but Prometheus leads me to a, I'm not sure a wonderful segue, but nevertheless a very current one. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson just described 
Brexit in terms of Prometheus. Did you know? Did this? I miss that? What did he oh, say? Oh, oh, he said that. Oh, it's it's a wonderful quote just two days ago that that the that the whole process of 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 getting Brexit is like eating the liver forever. And he was a oh, oh see the punishment and, 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 and of Prometheus. He's, yes, yeah. and so I thought I'd the ask you to torment of Prometheus. Ask you to, yes, ask yes, Prometheus you to, was punished by Zeus yeah, for the impertinence yeah. of stealing fire, and he was chained, shackled yeah. to the Caucasus Mountains, and yeah. every day an eagle came to tear open his side and eat his mm-hmm. liver in front of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Titans being immortal, yeah. the liver would regrow and the torture would, would be re- renewed every day. And I guess that's what... Though it's, that also is interesting, isn't it? Because they chose the liver. And it's, did the Greeks know that the liver is the only one of the organs that mm-hmm. actually does regenerate? Yeah, that's interesting. So I have no idea. Interesting? <laughs> yeah. But... Um, uh, yeah, that's a cheek on the part of uh, Boris, I know it is. It? I was hoping you could put him down for it, but maybe not. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah, he's just uh, doing what he always does. He's just uh, giving a bit of classical knowledge, but it's not the context is all wrong because um, is he Prometheus in this? Is the, well, is the British trying, I was b- trying body to th- politic Prometheus? I was try- I, that was my assumption. Is somehow he was relating himself to Prometheus. He was going to give... Yeah. Give the fire by removing from us from from Europe, but I, I assume there was yeah. that incredible conceit. But yeah. but he doesn't say that. It was really more the torture. It was just that would the go torture. On for, go on yeah. forever. And yeah. uh, well, he's uh, Prometheus is liberated by Heracles, the, or Hercules, yeah. as the Romans called him. So he is freed. 